Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be looking at a Sure 200 watt Class D power amplifier. Um, I'm also pairing this with a Meanwell 36 volt 160 watt power supply. I got a little bit of a setup here on the bench already. So I have my usual power meter set up so it can measure the power actually coming in. And then I have a 3 ohm resistor kind of all clodged together over here because it's rated that 3 ohm value. And uh, it's also rated three ohms at 10% THD, which is totally unusable. So we're not even gonna push it that far. So there's a couple little things here. So I have the setup kind of drawn out here. So there's a function generator, the amplifier, we have our power meter, feeding a power supply, power goes into the amplifier. And then from there, we're feeding a bunch of resistors. So I have a little speaker here. And so we're actually gonna be able to hear when the amplifier goes into clipping. That's set up through a 3.9K ohm resistor. So it just can hear how bad it's doing basically. And so over here, I just have a little chart. So a typical speaker sensitivity is about 85 dB, one watt, one meter. And if you put one watt into that speaker, you're gonna get 85 dB out. If you put in 10 watts, it's gonna go up by 10 dB because of the log scale. So we'll get 95 dB out with 10 watts. We'll get 105 dB with 100 watts. But if you go up to a 200 watts, the rating of this amplifier, you only get an extra three dB. So only 108 dB uh, output. So that, that extra 100 watts of power really doesn't get you very far in terms of uh, an output sound pressure level. All right, let's get into it. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the power amplifier. Seems pretty reasonable. Packaged in a little static bag. Yeah, crunchy vision. So here it is. It's got a option for a little volume control board. We don't have that. So I'm just gonna test it as is. It has a fan header over here. So if you push this thing real hard, I guess it could use a fan. Um, not much to see on the back. So it looks like it's got all kinds of wrecks on the bottom. We have a TUV approved, uh, UL also. So it's got some some conformance marks. Uh, we can see up here, 160 watts max, 36 volts, 4.44 amps. I'm pretty sure uh, I was looking this one up and I was hoping for a power factor corrected model. So we'll, we'll check and see how good this is at that. Do our power cord and go ahead and get ready to plug some things in. Speaker terminals are out over here and this is our signal from the function generator. terminals. I'm hoping these will fit in here. They might not. Yeah, they don't fit. Gonna need to get some wires. All right, I got some wires. We should be ready to power this thing up now. All right, so that's actually powered up now and Looks like idle, we're using about 6.35 watts. And the power factor is pretty low, 0.35. Well, let's go ahead and turn it on. So we've already got about 2.6 volts going in. We'll have to calculate how many watts that is. So we got our 2.606 times 2.606. We divide that by three. So we're getting about 2.26 watts out right now. So you just barely start to hear a tone coming out of the speaker. So now we're at seven volts. So we're 27.0 watts in. Power factor's gone up a lot. Now it's 0.74. So this is actually doing some, some correction on that. Now we got 51 watts in. We're up to that 0.99 power factor now. So this thing is doing proper power factor correction. Now this power supply is only rated at 160 watts, so I don't know how far we want to push it. I can hear distortion now. So right about there is pushing the limit. We got 200 watts. We got 21.93. So we're getting about 160 watts out right now. So we can calculate some of these efficiencies and see how we're doing. When we push the amp real hard, we get around 80% efficiency. Uh, up in that upper end. 
Um, where it's going to spend a lot of its time though, you can see that the amplifier is pretty inefficient and also the power factor is pretty low down in these lower watt ranges. Um, not, not fantastic and you know from our analysis up here we can see that in that 10 to 100 watt range is probably where we're going to spend um, a significant amount of time if we're playing music at a pretty high level. So you know really anywhere across the board here between 20 and 80 percent efficiency is realistic for this amplifier. Uh, a typical rule of thumb is one eighth of the rated power, so 200 times 0.125, about 25 watts is what we can expect. So the efficiency of the system is around 65% if we extrapolate between these two points, and that's really not that bad, um, considering that's the efficiency of the power supply and the amplifier module itself. That is getting pretty hot now. Of course, it's not even doing anything right now. It's just been sitting there idle. We can take a look at that with the thermal camera. The little power brick just started to warm up a little bit, but most of the heat's coming out right here on the heat sink. Okay. So next, I'm going to reconfigure this to 8 ohms. So that's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to pull this off of there. I'm going to disconnect this just temporarily. And then all i got to do is remove two of these make sure that that resistor doesn't connect with this one. That's very good. So we got eight ohms. I'm going to put a little bit lower of a resistor in here so you can hear that sine wave better. All right, so back again. We're going to go ahead and repeat this process, but now we're going to do it for the eight ohm load. Turn on our output. So that same idle still applies. Power factor still 0 0.3536. Um, so we have 7.16 watts and we have 2.65 times 2.65 we're going to divide that by 8 we got 0.88 watts out all right so you should be able to hear that sine tone now as we're pushing 19.6 uh, volts on the output we should be able to find that point where it starts to clip there it is You hear it start to square up the wave. So about there's the max. 72 watts. We're drawing 86.2 watts. So that's the, about 72 watts is what you can expect out of this into an 8 ohm load. So you can see that uh, they rate this at 3 ohms so they can put a big watt number on it. But if you want to rate it for a real speaker, you're looking more like 72 watts. And typical speakers tend to be in that 8 ohm range. So let's see what we got for efficiency. So now you can see that the under an 8 ohm load, it's got less current losses. So we actually have a better efficiency with an 8 ohm load. So we're actually hitting 83 and a half percent efficiency on the top end right before clipping. So that's fantastic. And then it drops off to 80 down here. But then in the power range where it's really going to be used most of the time, um, it's going to fall in that 30 to 60 percent efficiency range. Uh, with an 8 ohm speaker. So it's, it's very similar in terms of the efficiency between these two. Overall, the amplifier should be much cooler in this condition. That resistor is a little bit more warm because it's the only resistor powering or uh, that was absorbing that whole load. So overall, it's not a bad little amplifier module. We can see that the power efficiency um, it falls in a pretty reasonable range. Um, and this is a power factor corrected power supply. so. Uh, it does have a fairly high idle power consumption, so you would need some kind of circuit to be able to shut this thing down. You wouldn't want to just leave it plugged in all the time. But other than that, yeah, it seems seems okay. I'm not going to do too much analysis on uh, the harmonic distortion of this amplifier or the plus or minus frequency response of it. There has been some of that already posted around, and uh, usually people flatten the, them out with uh, EQ anyway. So overall, this is a, a fairly high-end and usable power amplifier. And uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.